In this part, we introduce options on swaps, so-called swaptions. We study the notion of moneyness. We see when is a swaption at the money, out of the money, and in the money. We will also see how swaptions can be used to synthetically create callable bonds. We will review Black's and Bachelier's price formulas. And finally, we will see how swaptions are quoted in terms of their Black and Bachelier implied volatilities. A payer swaption with strike rate K gives the holder the right to enter a payer swap with fixed rate K at the swaption expiry date. Usually the swaption expiry date equals the first reset date T0 of the underlying swap. So let's assume T0 is here and the swap has a length of Tn minus T0. It pays a fixed rate k at the cash flow dates and it receives floating at the same dates. This leads to a value of the swap at time t0 that can be positive or negative. You will exercise the swaption at expiry date t0 only if this value is positive. So let us have a closer look at the payer swaption payoff at expiry date T0. The value of the payer swap is what is shown here without the plus sign. The holder of the swaption will only exercise the option to enter the payer swap if this value is positive, hence the payer swaption payoff is the positive part of this value. Now notice that this payoff cannot be decomposed into more elementary payoffs, as was the case for caps and floors. This is because the positive part of a sum is not the same as the sum of the positive parts. From this we saw that the dependence between the different forward rates will enter the valuation procedure of a swaption. Now recall that an equivalent expression for the value of the payer swap is given in terms of the swap rate, which is shown here without the plus sign. Hence an equivalent expression for the payer swap should pay off at expiry date T0 is what is shown here with the plus sign. This leads us to the following convention. We say a payer swap is at the money if the strike rate is equal to the prevailing forward swap rate. The payer swap option is said to be in the money if the strike rate is smaller than this forward swap rate and out of the money if the strike rate is larger than the forward swap rate. For the receiver swap option it is the converse. There is also the convention to call the swap option that has expiry in x years and an underlying swap length of y years, the x year into y year swaption. Here is an application. Swaptions can be used to synthetically create callable bonds. Let's illustrate that with an example. Suppose a company has issued a 10 year bond with a 4% annual coupon on a principle of n. Now suppose the company wants to add the right to prepay or call the bond at par after five years. But the company cannot change the original bond. Let's look at the situation the company faces after five years sitting at this time point. The company is facing cash flows 4% annual coupons on the notional of N. The company wants to add the option to get rid of these payments of these 4% annual coupons and instead pay the notional N at date 5. 
Now notice that the value of the bond at time 5 is given by the expression here. Formally speaking, this is the same as the notional n plus the value at time 5 of a receiver swap of length 5 years. Now the company will only call the bond at par, that means at value n, if the value of the receiver swap is positive. Now here's the solution. The company can buy a 5-year into 5-year receiver swap option with a strike rate of 4%. The payoff of the swap option at expiry date 5 is just the positive part of the value of the receiver swap that we've seen on the previous slide. From a cash flow point of view, this is also clear. Suppose the company exercises the swap option, enters the receiver swap, then the company will receive the 4% coupons on these five years and it will pay floating instead. Now the fixed lag payments cancels with the 4% coupon payments on the bond and we know from the previous part that paying the notional n at time 5 is equivalent to paying the notional n at time 10 and floating in between. Here is Black's formula for payer and receiver swap options. where capital Phi denotes the standard normal cumulative distribution function and the parameter D1 and D2 are given here. Again, this formula has one volatility parameter. It's sigma. It's called black volatility or relative volatility. The underlying modeling assumptions for Black's formula, which was log normality under the forward measure for caplets and floorlets, is now different here. It is log normality of the swap rate, but under a different measure than the forward measure. So we refrain from deriving it here. Bachelier's formula for payer and receiver swap option prices is shown here, where phi is the standard normal cumulative distribution function, the small phi is the normal density, and the parameter capital D is given here. Again, there is a single volatility parameter sigma, it's called the normal volatility. Swaption prices are quoted in terms of the black or normal implied volatilities. The accrual period delta for the underlying swap can differ from prevailing deltas for caps within the same market region. For example, in the Eurozone, caps are typically written on semi-annual LIBOR, where delta is equal to six months, while swaps pay annual coupons such that the delta is one. Here is an example of swap option quotes in terms of Black's implied volatilities of at-the-money swap options in the Eurozone in August 2013. Maturities range from 1 to 10 years and the swap length from 1 to 10 years. So the first row gives us the 1 year into 1 year, 2 year, 3 year and so on, 10 year swap option quotes in percentage points in terms of Black's implied volatilities. The matrix of values is illustrated in the figure on the right hand side. An interest rate model for swap options valuation must fit such a given volatility surface. Here are the normal implied volatilities of the same 
at the money swap options in the Eurozone in August 2013.